Hello, everybody. Welcome to the, I don't know what we're calling this, but whatever it is, it's 10 questions. <laughs> One more time, swimming hair. Yay. <laughs> so we're finally covering, covering swim hair, vacation hair. These are questions that were, at, were asked by those of you inside of the resource center. And so we're going to start. We're, we're not going to waste any time. So how should you generally prepare your hair before swimming? All right, so let's give a little background on the why I'm the one answering these questions. Um, y'all, I know y'all don't see me too much over on this side because I'm helming over the professional side, but I am a former competitive swimmer. So I started out as somebody who was in the pool every single summer um, on two years of the swim team in high school, doing two a days. And so I'm very familiar with pool hair and maintenance and care of it. So generally prepare your hair for swimming, um, put it in a way that it cannot get tangled. So whether that is a ponytail, uh, some braids, some twists. You can wear a swim cap if you desire. I am a swim cap free person. They pull my hair more than they help. Uh, so I just usually will secure my hair in a way that it can't come loose in the pool. Wet it with tap water and then get in the pool. Here's why you're not, I please don't slather your hair in all the oils and butters and leave-ins and stuff. Because what happens is you get into that chlorinated water and all that oil-based stuff is gonna leach into the pool. Number one, that makes the pool filter work a lot harder because now it has to go and try to filter out oil-based products. Then you're just swimming through an oil slick and you're not necessarily protecting your hair from um, chlorinated water because if it can still absorb, it's going to. If your hair is full of tap water that doesn't have nearly as much chlorine in it, it's a bit harder for it then to go in and say, I'm so thirsty, let me absorb all this chlorinated water. I want to add to that when you are styling your hair as if you're going to pull, pull it back, not up, because then that means the water is dripping down all over your forehead and like falling into your eyes. So you want the water to be able to be back and like be down your neck as opposed to down your face. This is yes. just my little tidbit about that. <laughs> okay, next question. Does the hair care change depending on what type of water you swim in, i.e. salt water or chlorine? No, it doesn't. It really all goes back to cleanse, condition, and style. It doesn't matter what style you're wearing your hair, whether you have a wash and go, twist, braids, weave, all of that. When you when you get out of that water, your hair is either going to have a lot of salt in it from the salt water, or it's going to have chlorine. And if we don't understand, chlorine is actually a salt. And so we want to make sure that we are cleansing that salt out of the hair, that we are conditioning, putting back in the humectants, the emollients it needs, smoothing that hair down. And then we're doing a simple style, especially if we're intending on getting back in the pool or in the ocean another day. Okay, next question. Does pool or salt water damage natural hair? Ooh, if I had, had a penny every time somebody asked that. <laughs> If the aftercare is improper, absolutely yes. I can't think about it. it's a chlorine's a salt. Salt water is definitely salt. If you leave a salt to dry on or in a surface, it can crack that surface, it can erode that surface, it can abrade that surface, it can severely dry out that surface because when you think about meat is preserved in salt. And so again, it's not cure. directly <laughs> cure. Sure, you're curing your hair. So it's not that it's directly that the pool or the salt water, the minute you jump in, is going to damage your hair. It is not following up, going into the pool, going into the water uh, with your proper hair care. Yeah, so just just wash your damn hair after you get done. You have to think of it, and like you said, think of it in terms of you've been in the pool, you've been in the salt water, whatever you still need to wash everything just head to toe head to toe has got to get washed because the salt has touched it especially now i want to say this i was actually thinking about this while i was in the shower thinking about washing my own hair and not really getting to it um is that even in braids everybody says braids are easier on vacation you're still supposed to shampoo and condition braids and then hopefully you are sitting under a dryer because if you leave braids wet they take a lot longer time to dry, especially if you're in a humid environment, which a lot of us are going to be in if we're near salt water and sometimes when we're near pools as well. Um, so the atmosphere is not gonna pull enough water out. And so you're gonna walk around with wet 
mildewy scalp and hair the entire time you're on vacation wearing somebody else's hair. So it's actually easier. So one thing I can add to this too, because Carlisa touched on this, Uh she said to completely avoid faux locks. They are, when they get wet, they are extremely heavy. They are the hardest to dry. Um, and also the hardest to care for. So she does not recommend at all a faux lock for a vacation whatsoever. Because if you do, vacation hair, it's not. if you wear them on vacation, you better be one of them girls like this at the pool. <laughs> My hair is not getting wet. You will see me dip. <laughs> into this pool i will wade into the ocean up to my waist with the locks up here just plan on not getting your hair wet yeah i'm, I'm a girl like I, if i'm gonna be on vacation i'm diving into the waves <laughs> yes. uh next question is can pool or salt water dry out your natural hair yes it can i think i answered it before but again breaking down the fact that uh, chlorine is a salt salt water is salt if you let it dry into the hair you're curing the hair and you're gonna really the whole goal of salt is to pull moisture out. And so if you leave it in there as the hair dries, it's going to pull even more moisture out. And it's just going to be not so great. And we also think about chlorine. Chlorine can break things down. It breaks things down. So you think about that chlorine, that chlorinated water or that salt water once it's left in your head, especially if you've pulled it back into a bun or ponytail and you just walked around with that same wet ponytail stretched out, you're creating um the environment for your hair to over dry and, be and you've been dry. sitting in the sun, yes. <laughs> you, wait, wait, wait. You, sun got you got salt breaking down and we also know that that sun like this hair when you have chlorine or salt water in here and you add sun to it you are just asking you are asking for a disaster so i would suggest if you are getting salt water and you get your hair wet i would suggest because every ocean pool most of the time has a shower nearby Mm -hmm. to run your hair under the water at that shower to help to remove that salt before like to help that process it's kind of like how we detangle while we shampoo we start that process of removing that salt water from our hair we're just rinsing it and then going another step when we have the time and i'm Mm -hmm. not talking about three days later i'm talking about our room that night before dinner yes rinsing or sorry actually shampooing the hair and those of you who are color treated do do not skip any steps (laughs) do not do not for those of you who are color treated there are some sprays some uv protection sprays they're not necessarily curl friendly they do have silicones and they do have some other ingredients in them um that you can like a a veda has a sun veil um i don't know if it's still out but it was out when i was in school and i actually really liked it because i lived in florida at the time and wait i was at the beach every weekend so me and sun veil were friends and that rinse out that Aisha just said do at the pool shower and then when you get to your room again not three days later that same day do your cleanse condition and style yep next one does the wash hour process change when sim- swimming in a chlorinated pool nope you may change what you're using depending upon how often you're swimming so if you're swimming once a week that may be like your time you're going to use your swimmer shampoo and you just use your swimmer shampoo, you may follow it up with a moisture shampoo, just depending upon the needs of your particular hair um, and what you feel like you need to follow up with. If you're somebody who, like me, was doing two a days, four days a week, and Wednesdays was like, I had a break on Wednesday because we just had after school practice and not 6 a.m. practice and 3.30 practice, you're probably going to be cleansing and conditioning after both times. Now, when I was doing that type of intense work, and pretty much people right now that are only doing that type of intense swimming are doing like triathlon or decathlons or something that involves them doing heavy training, Um, having a moisture cleanser, um, a cleansing conditioner even, make sure your cleansing conditioner has some surfactants in it, but you are using that after every uh, go round in the water, you're using your conditioner. Um, At the time I was relaxed, but I was still wearing my hair in plaits. So plaits, individual braids, and my individual braids would like go up in a ponytail, go in a bun, like two buns. So I didn't have to manipulate my actual hair, Um, but there wasn't the additional weight and friction from artificial hair. So find a way for you to wear your hair um, that's easy and cleanse and condition in that. And then at that seven to 10 day mark, um, that's when you're pulling in your swimmers cleanser following up with your moisture this may be a good time to pull in a deep conditioner because you've been doing a lot with your hair again we're not anti-deep conditioner 
we are deep conditioned when needed. And that may be an instance where you're going to need that additional moisture and that additional protein structure just so that you can um, replenish what you may be losing from that hair from kind of manipulating it a lot. Okay. Next question is kind of similar, but again, this is a question that somebody had. How often should I wash my hair when swimming in salt water and chlorinated pools every day? <laughs> like after every Probably incidence every of being in the pool. That's one of those things. It's like every time you go to the bathroom, you wipe, right? Let's let's hope. It's well, I'm not getting in people's business, but we if again if this is something that is important to you your hair the care of your hair well this is a part of the care process so it's kind of like your hair it whenever you're doing a different lifestyle activity is like buying a different piece of clothing item that requires different care right yes that that jumpsuit that you bought from nordstrom that cost you 250 dollars okay is going to require something different from something you bought from fashion nova that you can throw in the washer and wash it up cold I'm just using these as examples because the care instructions are different for us. The care instructions are different uh, or vary based on individuals lifestyles mm -hmm. and how you choose to wear your hair. Cause that also plays a part in it as well. Yeah. That too. Okay. So are there any specific types of shampoo conditioner to consider when swimming in chlorinated pools? I made a mistake. Don't, don't <laughs> roast me and have it. Oh, I didn't even notice it. <laughs> I did. I just now I was like, dang it. <laughs> I mean, cycles happen. Um, <laughs> but here's what I would put into rotation. There's nothing you necessarily need to change. I would put into rotation a swimmer shampoo that is going to remove the mineral, the chlorine, any other minerals that are going to be in that um, chlorinated pool. Also with salt water, it's going to remove that same type of uh, mineral. Because again, chloride is a mineral. Um, Again, depending upon how often you're cleansing and conditioning is how often you may need to use it. I am personally am not a super fan of using it every single day if you're swimming it every if you're swimming every day. Maybe like twice a week, maybe once a week. That's going to depend on your essential elements and again how wet you got your hair in the pool. If you're like me and you just in the pool with nothing on and it's just soaking wet, by all means, rinse really well, use your swimmer's poo, uh, use your moisture, and then follow up with your conditioner. But it's not really anything that we think we need to do mm -hmm. um, beyond making sure that that chlorine is gone. Okay, next question. Are swim caps helpful to protect the hair? If not, what should I use to protect my hair? Well, we always try to, like, hair is not a good <laughs> The funny thing about our hair is our hair is actually designed to protect us. Th thank you. Because I'm like, I don't think do more. That the hair, it's a reason why our hair is the way it is, the way, the why it curls, the way it actually curls. It really has a lot to do with one climate. Um, because where we come from in the world is very sunny and it was it's really to protect us from the sun it's a reason why it lives out just imagine a protection somebody, and ac all at the same time what somebody was just asking about hats and i was like well i can't really wear, i can't really wear hats wear my hat? hair is a whole hat my hair is a whole hat I but have a big like, head and then I have a lot of hair. No. No, but your hair is really, your hair is truly, it really protects us It prote in the cold. It mm -hmm. protects us by keeping us warm because that's the reason my dad used to give me a hard time about not wearing hats. You don't need one. You had a whole well, hair hat. When I was relaxed, I could actually wear a you, hat. You still had a hair hat when you I were I still relaxed. had a hair hat. But he <laughs> gave me a hard time because he worked outside. He worked for CTA on the mm -hmm. trains. And he spent a lot of time outside. And he was talking about, like, he would see people outside when it was cold. And he would see, like, the emission of the heat from their heads. Like the steam. Because Chicago. Well, let's Going back to that, <laughs> the idea of protection. So, one, your hair protects you. But how do you care for it? So I want to just change the way we talk about it and get to what do we do to care for our hair um, in the conditions of swimming and again, vacationing. Yeah. Oh, swim caps. That's, that's the mindset shift. It's not about us protecting our hair because number one, we've got to just be, just get active. I'm, I'm, I'm speaking to myself too about getting active. Um, again, former competitive swimmer, don't do nothing now. I need to do something. Um, but when we think about protecting the hair and swimming, I'm thinking about not having hair in my face while I'm in the pool. I'm thinking about not having hair that's floating behind me that can grab onto a lane 
um, segmenter or something that can pull me under. So I'm trying not to have free floating hair in the pool, uh, which is for some people, a swim cap is there. A swim cap is not there to keep your hair from being wet. No. A swim cap is there to keep your hair organized in the water so that you don't have to do anything to it in terms of getting it in order when you get out of the pool and go to cleanse and condition and style. So let's again, switch that over into how you care for it afterwards versus trying to protect it on the front end. So two more questions then we're out. One more of this question. Can I still do a wash and go if I plan to swim on vacation? Yeah, you could do whatever you want to do to your hair. However, you get in the water, wash and go is gone. It's over and it is done. You will have to do a new hairstyle. Will you be able to do a wash and go? Depends on what kind of time you have or what time, what type of time you like to dedicate to your hair while you're on vacation, relaxing. I'm good for like, if I'm on vacation, I really don't care what my hair is doing. I'm probably gonna go on vacation looking like this. I'm gonna get in that pool. Y'all might see me with my hair pulled back. Y'all might see a phony pony on. Y'all may, maybe, we'll see a wash and go that I do. But I've at this point, I've an been arrival. on a few vacations. An arrival wash and go though. It's an arrival one. It's not gonna be a wash and go when I leave. Oh, <laughs> uh, it's it'll if, if I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna I'm gonna do it with the diffuser. But when I go on vacation. First of all, I'm married. He know what I look like ugly. He know what I look like sick. We are gonna be on vacation comfortable. I'm not worried about cute. You may see, now that my, the back of my hair is getting longer, you may see a high puff. If I had a TWA, you may see a fro and some cute earrings and a lip. It's do vacation. You, do Put some what cute, cute, cute you, boo -boo on and keep going. Do do what you have time to do. It's it's not that deep. Like I said, you can arrive in a wash and go. You are not going to leave in a wash and go. I've gone from wash and go to buns on vacation every single time. Wash and go puff. It's whatever. Whatever ends up happening, and I plan to have time for it to do. But don't make it. Don't make such a event out of it. Last question. Does the same, another typo, does the same hair care rules apply for swimming with children? Yep. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. And I know I, y'all see my daughter. Y'all have seen the copious amounts of hair she has. We have had swimming lessons before. I am like, I have to get her back into swimming lessons this year. And I'm just sitting here with the, Jesus, I'm going to have to wash this baby's hair. And they're trying to tell me if I want to put her in rescue swim school, that it's 15 minutes every day about 30 minutes away from here, which means I gotta drive, have a 15 to 20 minute lesson, come home and then contend with some hair. But yes, the same rules apply. You've still got to cleanse, condition, and style after chlorine exposure. Nothing is going to like preclude you, whether it's for you or your child, of cleansing, conditioning, and styling. And I know as kids, like, yeah, you may have a swim cap on a swim cap, baby, tight as the dickens. That hair is gonna get wet. And I was I was that kid at the YMCA camp going swimming every day. And you know what? We had to shampoo and condition every day. And it's just one of those things. But I appreciate my parents for being parents of a black little girl with a lot of hair and I know how to swim. That is a gift that I appreciate from my father who actually grew up and he was a lifeguard. Um, so, so knowing how to swim is so much more important than our hair. We can get through the clear condition style sessions uh, with our kids as we need to. So again, to wrap it up, it's not that deep guys. Um, same rules apply as they apply to any other part of caring for your hair. The only thing that changed is again, your lifestyle, something you've added uh, into your your everyday or let's say every week. And now it's going to require you to make some adjustments um, to still have that care intact. But the foundation is still there and it doesn't change just because you change something in your, your active life. So thank you guys. I hope this, we, well, we hope that these answer your questions for swim care um, and we'll see you at the next 10.